Okay. Well, I'm not preaching this morning, so those of you in the back, we're about to leave. You can come back. Um, no, we have we have uh, John Perch is going to be preaching this morning. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to introduce him. He's a member of our church um, and uh, a very faithful and valued member, and uh, has just been a great friend and resource for me as well. And um, so I'm really excited to have him come up and to share what's on his heart this morning. Um, he's a part of an organization called the Mago Christi, and he is a spiritual formation missionary. And so he knows his stuff, so make sure you're listening this morning as he's preaching. Um, his wife Kathy is right down here as well, and um, it's just been such a joy to get to know John and Kathy. So could you guys just give John a warm welcome as he comes up here? Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Vince and Allison, for leading us into worship. We're currently preaching through a series on community. What is community? How do we do it? Is community, community something optional that we do, or is it something essential to who we are? Is it something useful for obtaining social goods, or is it something essential for beings created in the image of God? How can I possibly know who we are if I don't know who I am? I would be honored if you would pray with me. Father, we come to you in Jesus by your spirit. Lord, we ask for a blessing on all those gathered here. Would you help me to put aside my desire to do well today, my attachment to be well thought of, and help me to remain grounded in my attachment to your love, would you help, help us to make space to abide in joy and freedom found only in the flow of your presence as we explore the question, who am I? Who am I? What am I? These are the existential questions that emerge when our highest forms of art merge human misery with philosophy and touch our souls with the desire to know what it truly means to be human to be fully alive. It is the question asked by those locked in existential conflict between the true self and the false self, like these two. Captain America, Civil War. Captain America, Steve Rogers, and Iron Man, Tony Stark, are about to split the Avengers, a community of superheroes, in the two camps. This will escalate into all-out war between Team Iron Man and Team Captain America over the question of whether or not they should allow the government to regulate a hero's actions. Steve Rogers, big man in a suit of armor, take that off, what are you? Tony Stark, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. I know guys worth none of that, worth 10 of you. I've seen the footage. The only thing you really fight for is yourself. You're not the guy to make the sacrifice play, to lay down on the wire and let the other guy crawl over him. I think I just cut the wire. Always a way out. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. A hero like you. Your laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. Put on the suit. Let's go a few rounds. And sing. Who is the true veil? Who is the true self behind the masks? Behind the shield? Behind the superpowers? Before the question, or should we say accusation, of Steve Rogers could even finish echoing off the walls, the false self in Tony Stark arose with layers of false identities, snarky comebacks, and counterattacks. Let's go a few rounds. I'll put you in your place. The true self never even had time to hear the question, let alone sit with it in the light and search for the answer. Who am I? The question gnaws away at the human soul. It was the visceral cry of your soul as a newborn baby, crying out in terror as you emerge from a, into a world of harsh light, air, and gravity, as you suddenly lost the life-giving connection with mother. 
is the cry for help in the disorienting space between bodily connection and the womb. That was your whole world and the new transcendent connections about to be formed face to face and soul to soul. Who am I? It is the cry of a preschooler, a stranger in a strange land with strange children and strange caregivers. It is the cry of disorienting space between family and community. Who am I? It is the cry of a teen swept up in a flood of hormones and social narratives, transforming them in body, mind, and soul. It is the cry in the disorienting space between childhood and adulthood. Who am I? It is the cry of the athlete trying to establish an identity through being stronger, faster, through crushing the competition. It is a cry in the disorienting space between glory and purpose. Who am I? It is the cry of the high-achieving student, seeking esteem through grades and security for the future. It is the cry of the overwhelmed student, trying to survive in a soul-crushing environment. Who am I? It is the cry of the lonely, feeling cut off and isolated, longing to be seen, longing to belong, and to feel fully human. Who am I? It is the cry of the underemployed trying to scrape by until the next set of bills. Who am I? It is the cry of the graduate trying to survive and thrive in a world of apex predators vying for power and control. Who am I? It is the 1%, having climbed to the top of the ladder and looking at it all and saying, is this all that there is? Who am I? It is the cry of the rejected lover, longing to fill their need for affection in the heart of another. Who am I? It is the cry of the middle-aged, realizing too late in life that the dreams that define them will never come to pass, and they don't know who they are without them. It is the cry of a life stripped of meaning, swept up in circumstances beyond one's power to control. Who am I? Is the cry of the human soul trying to survive in a world that seeks to take their precious lives, captive to its agendas, cogs in a soulless machine, and bleed them dry as it enslaves their hearts, minds, and souls in exchange for things that promise happiness but are powerless to deliver it? A little lifestyle upgrade, a little more money, a little bigger house, a little better clothing, a little faster car, a little newer phone, and perhaps a little newer partner. Who am I? It is the cry of you and me rising out in the fear, isolation, and anger of 2020 as we are forced to stare into the void of our own mortality, isolation, and powerlessness. Who am I? It is the cry heard by your heavenly Father, the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, who has spent the past 13.7 billion years preparing a universe where you can exist and flourish in his love, as sons his sons so that you can truly behold him. Who am I? It is the cry heard by the Son, Jesus the Christ, the Savior of the world, who takes you and with you all the rejection and suffering of your soul into himself, breaking its hold and power over you. Who am I? It is the cry heard by the Holy Spirit, sent by your Father through the Son, residing deep within the core of your spirit. Be still. Listen. I am here. You are not alone. I hear your cry. And I will enter into it and carry it and you into the very heart of Christ, into the very heart of the Father, and he will answer you and call forth new creation from within. My desire for our time this morning is to explore how we might posture our souls to hear that answer, that you might know who you truly are and begin to discern your place in the universe 
to begin to discover who we are, that you might truly live. In order to be able to wrestle with the question, who am I, we need to know what am I? What is the big story, the meta-narrative into which our human lives are being written? You do not just pop into existence in a vacuum. We were designed by an infinitely wise and benevolent deity who loves you, who is love, who loves all things, and in his grand and glorious design is not only preparing a special place for you, but is preparing you for a special place. And not just for a place, but to be that special place. 1 Corinthians 15, 48, 49. As the man of dust, so also are those who are of dust. And as the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. The man of dust. The first hearers of those words would have thought of Adam in Genesis. Genesis that begins with, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness, darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Genesis 1, 1 to 3. Formless, lost in darkness, blind and unaware of the Spirit of God hovering over the chaotic waters of my being. What am I? Does that sound familiar? Since the moment God said, let there be light, the physiosphere, consisting of all matter and energy of the universe, was born to an infinitely dense, hot mess. Space-time sprang forth, an ever-expanding vessel making space for energy and forces to form matter, from quarks to muons to protons, neutrons, electrons, to the simplest atoms, hydrogen and helium. And space-time continues to expand in a wonderful dance with gravity, making room for stars, stars. Amazing vessels of gravity, fusion, and light gathering isolated atoms and taking them into their powerful creative hearts, fusing them into new elements, then exploding them out across the heavens to continue the dance. Each generation of dancers taking in the elements of the earlier generation, making heavier and more complex elements. It took three generations of stars just to form the variety of atoms needed by your body. What kind of being has such creative intelligence and power to design, design such a marvelous universe? What kind of being has such loving patience? What kind of infinite being dances over and enjoys every minute, every moment of every vibration in the universe in all its fullness and glory? All creation rings with wave upon wave of glory at the touch of the one who hovers over the waters. As if the physical universe dancing within a sea of seemingly endless energy were not enough, something equally mathematically impossible happens. The physiosphere grows in complexity as parts form holes, and horn holes form greater holes, each hole transcending the sum of its parts until, until it is formed in an incredibly complex vessel to be filled with life. The biosphere is born. In this diagram, we have concentric circles, each showing the, the expanding complexity of creation, from the physiosphere, all the matter and energy of the universe, to the biosphere, the dimension of the living things, Vessels within vessels. From formless list to form to living creatures, from the simplest miraculous life form to the most complex, vessels within vessels of synergistic relationship of form and function. They do not know what they are or are even able to form such concepts. They simply exist, live, and move their had their being in Him, each swept up into effortlessly fulfilling the unique role in the great dance of creation, expressing the unlimited joy and creativity of the Almighty. And in the midst of the biosphere that lifts physical existence into a whole new dimension of biological life, God fashions humanity in his own image and likeness, sharing with humanity God's own creative power, 
the power of imagination, of reason, of creativity, of intellectual insight, of free will, and of spirit. All the capacities required to be a truly loving person. God creates Adam, the man of dust, male and female, in his own image, the image of God, the Imago Dei. From the dust of the ground, he fashions a vessel and breathes into humanity the capacity to live in two new dimensions of being, the Noah sphere, the sphere of rational thinking, that dimension of the mind, free will, personhood, in the theosphere, the theosphere, the realm of spirit and spiritual things and spiritual beings, the heavens, the first glimpses of the self-revelation of the divine presence, walking and talking beside us in the garden. To what degree they walk by biological sight and to what degree they walk by spiritual faith, I don't know. A question we might say for long walks, quiet talks, and silent meditations. At whatever level of spiritual maturity those made in the image of God began, they were made to behold God, creation, the cosmos, through all the dimensions of its existence, from matter and energy to biological life to life of the mind to the life of the spirit, is at long last self-aware in humanity, unifying all these dimensions of being into a living soul, looking back at its creator with emotion, reason, and imagination, not only known, but knowing, and not only knowing, but loving. The man of dust, the image of God, beholding the one in whose image they are made. Now this is a very crude diagram. And you may be wondering, is this saying that God is the theosphere? The realm of spiritual awareness? No. God cannot be conceptualized on any diagram of dimensions of transcending order and complexity. No leap, however large, can capture the infinite deity even as the ultimate dimension of being, God is higher still, higher than the highest heaven. God is the ground of all being. God is the source of all, the ground of all being, truly transcendent to the infinite degree. You might say God is the paper upon which the diagram is drawn, the ground of being in which all things live and move and have their being. We cannot ascend off the page to God. If we are to be one, God must descend onto the page to us. Sadly, there arose in the heart of humanity space to behold doubt about the character of God. Does God really have my best interests in mind? Is God truly loving and benevolent? Can we take the intellectual and spiritual life of God for ourselves? like a thing to be plucked from its source and eaten. If we had enough knowledge and power, could we be completely self-sufficient like God? The power to remake ourselves in creation according to our own plans and our own desires. And so we sought to take the knowledge and power that we were not prepared to receive, gifts that were never designed to operate apart from the source of the one who is the source of all life, knowledge and wisdom. We sought to pull knowledge out of the theosphere where it abided in the awareness of God and isolate knowledge as power in the lesser dimensions of the soul, in the body, in the mind. We fell from love into fear, from communion into hiding, and from worship into manipulating. We sought to transform the fruit of the theosphere, the awareness of the heavens, into a force to be seized and controlled and lost the ability to abide in the continual awareness of God's loving presence. We lost the capacity for paradise. Humanity, 2.0. We ourselves, we will become like God and create our own heavens, our own spiritual realm, and into the heart of humanity, that place where we were meant to behold God, we placed a veil a false self, shielding us from the awareness of God, 
that we might feel free to chase the delusion of becoming our own all in all, to become our own God, dependent on no one and no thing. We went from being a vessel of intellectual and spiritual transcendence, where creation communes with God, effortlessly abiding in joy and harmony, to becoming a lost soul. Trapped within a false self, at the mercy of programs seeking power, esteem, and security, redirecting our spirit to detach from God and to attach to whatever objects would promise that happiness, no matter the cost to ourselves and others. The lost heart wants what the lost heart wants. We went from the heights of the we went from being the heights of creation's greatest blessing to know itself and its God, the high priest and servant of all, and fell to become the apex predator, the alpha consumer, seeking what or whom we will devour next. In beholding our fears, we become one with them. We form families, communities, and nations of alpha consumers and apex predators vying for power to ensure possession of whatever promises to fulfill our need for control, esteem, and security. And we become tyrants, a curse upon creation, throwing all into disorder and bondage under the prince and power of the air of our own theosphere, the spiritual space of beholding ourselves apart from God and becoming what we behold in the dark. From this dark despair, we ask the question, who am I? What am I? An apex predator? An alpha consumer seeking whom I may devour? That kind of sounds like the devil. That's pretty dark, John. Yes, it's dark. One might even say spiritually formless and void, outer darkness. Is there hope? In Jesus, there's always hope. But is that who I am? An apex predator who ruins everything in a rampage of consumerism and then escapes a ruined creation at when I die because I profess the right things about Jesus? I want to be more than a forgiven predator. I want to live into the true self of who I am and die to the false self of who I am not. I was hoping to actually become part of God's 13.7 billion year project to bring all creation to its fullness, where God becomes all in all, filling all creation with the knowledge and glory of the Lord. I want to be part of the unbroken chain of life, fearfully and wondrously fashioned into the Imago Dei, the image of God, the apex of creation, the temple of God, I want to be a living vessel full of God's presence, abiding in blessing and being a blessing to everyone and everything around me. I want Christ to abide in me as the Father abides in him and for you and I to become one with them even as they are one. And so we shall. We shall become what we behold. You and I are so much more than the false self, the alpha consumer, the apex predator. You are a human with a true self, the imago Dei, a true person made in the image of God. Do you have any idea how incredible that is? Not only are you crushing the whole physical existence thing against impossible odds, but by your very nature you have transcended the sum of your parts to become a living soul, an internal community full of wonderful gifts, feeling, memory, emotion, an imaginative mind, and a spirit made to seek God and not be content until it finds its home in him and nothing else. And God makes his home in you. Your inner world is so much larger than the outer universe. You are freaking amazing. Every one of Earth's 7.9 billion people are utterly amazing intimately known and cherished by God. He dances over you, me, and all creation with joy that makes the universe sing. You are deeply and relentlessly loved and pursued by God. He dances over you, me, and all with joy that makes the universe sing. 
You are deeply, relentlessly loved and pursued by God, who will not rest until your innermost being is safely home in Him, and truly free to be the loving vessel and blessed person you were designed to be. And who are you designed to be? One who beholds the life and light of Christ, and you will become what you behold. The Gospel of John retells the story of Genesis from this perspective. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus, the heavenly man, Jesus is fully God and fully human. To understand the character of the Father, we look to Jesus. To understand what it means to be human, to be truly human, to be fully human, we look to Jesus. Jesus enters into us and sets us free from our false selves and begins restoring all the ways our interior community has fractured. Lost parts seeking to survive on their own, and sets us free to grow into our true selves, to become truly and fully human, filled with the fullness and presence of God, a place where heaven and earth become one, a temple. And the heavenly man, the Son of God, laid aside his glory and took on flesh that we could behold the loving, humble, and forgiving heart of God. Through his perfect life, obedient death, resurrection, and ascension, His death and our death become one. His divine life and our human life become one. By the Holy Spirit, Christ is in your spirit. The Father is in Christ, and they are making us all one. One marvelous body of Christ overflowing with agape love, flowing from the realm of heaven through us and transforming all that we touch in the new creation to be one, just as Jesus and the Father are one. To be one with him, not sitting in the stands and cheering on from a distance as Jesus puts on a heavenly man light show. Beholding the Lord is not a spectator sport. It is full immersion into the Trinitarian communion. Isn't there a God-breathed part of you that actually wants to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood, to be the temple of God, full of his glory, to be one with Christ, to participate in the divine life of the Father, Son, and Spirit from within. Who am I? One who beholds God from within. John in chapter 17 of his gospel says it like this. And this is life eternal, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And he continues, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. To personally know the Lord. Not just Bible facts about him, to know, to taste, to abide in the firsthand experiential knowledge of the Father and the Son, by the Holy Spirit to participate in their communion, to become a temple of God, to behold the beauty of the Lord who train fills the temple, your temple, your soul. With all those who behold him as he truly is, our hearts are filled to overflowing, crying with all the host of heaven, holy Holy, holy is the Lord. You become what you behold. Who am I? You are a vessel of the Holy Spirit, beholding God from within your innermost being. You are a vessel of the presence of God, wherever your day takes you, revealing God to all who behold you. You are a vessel of the presence of God in whatever task, however important, however ordinary, however trivial. You are a vessel of the presence of God. You are a vessel of the presence of God with everyone you meet. 
You are a vessel of the presence of God to every dog, cat, bird, bush, and blade of grass you encounter. Who am I? You are the hope and dream of stardust into which is breathed the breath of God, the living soul for whom Christ died, rose, and grafted into his divine and eternal life that you might live and reign with him forever, full of joy in his communion with the Father. Who am I? You are a vessel filled with divine light and love made to behold the Lord and be transformed into his image. And you will become what you behold. If you would permit me, I would like to speak in first person as a blessing on behalf of the Lord. Who are you? You are the long-awaited beloved guest at the table of the Lord. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, even the lowliest, most ordinary person, hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with them. Who are you? You are the child loved by my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Who are you? You are the one I will never leave nor forsake. You are the one who I am with always. Who are you? You are the one with whom I sit inside your struggles, sharing in your tears of fear of not being enough. Who are you? You are the one whom I work beside, filling you with perseverance and meaning, transforming you into my image, even when you are captive in the most dehumanizing conditions. Who are you? You are the new creation in me. The old order is passing away. In me, the new has come. Who are you? The guest I have long awaited to share my table. Come, bring all that you are, the parts of you that rejoice at my coming and the parts of you that hide from me in fear and shame. Come, eat of me, drink of me, taste and see that I am good. You will come to know me, and you will come to know that you need no armor, nor shield, nor superhuman powers. I am more than enough. In me, you are more than enough. I in you, the Father in me, making us one. Who are we? We are the temple of God. Take off the veil, behold me as I am, and you will become what you behold. And in me, you will know yourself for the first time. And we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed to the same image from one degree of glory to another. 2 Corinthians 3.18 For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So come. Come as an empty earthen vessel waiting to be filled. Lord Jesus, we come to your table to behold you. Help us to remove the veil that we might behold you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength to know you as you truly are, to love you, to behold one another as we truly are in you, and let your love flow through us to one another. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This is the blood of my new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all of you. 
As you eat and drink, remember him. Behold him in his death. Behold him in his resurrection. Behold him in his ascension. Come to the table and behold him. So, Lord, we come. Jesus abiding in us, the Father abiding in Jesus, and by the Holy Spirit drawing us into their communion, into their presence. And he sends us out into the world to go forth in his presence, to be a blessing. So, Lord, we come and we go abiding in your presence. Lord, make us one in you. Believe the gospel and live it. In Jesus' name, amen.